Welcome everyone to the PUBG Mobile Global Championship Season 0 pre-show brought to you by PUBG Mobile Esports. My name is Power Bang and I'll be your host alongside Hot Jukes as we discuss the world's best PUBG Mobile players and teams as they vie for a share of $2 million in prizes. So excited to see who does what. I gotta say, super challenging to try to predict winners and losers and overall what was gonna happen because everyone is just so dang good. That's absolutely right, everybody. We're gonna be giving you guys our power rankings today as well as telling you who we think are the best players going into this insane event. So stay tuned. We got a lot of action for you today. I've got my favorites for sure, but we've also got some Dark Horse predictions coming your way, some underdogs even, so keep it locked, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you guys subscribe over at PUBG Mobile Esports as well. Let's not waste any more time, straight to the power rankings, Hot Juice, let's take a look at our list. So taking it from the bottom eight Hot Juice, we're looking at places 17 through 24 out of our top 24 teams. And again, from the very bottom, look at place 24, Elites United team. They are the host country invite team, so they're getting a shot to prove themselves on the big stage here. Well, they're gonna have to do it. I mean, here's the deal. They're going against the best on the planet from every different region. Now, they do have the home court advantage, but I think that's all they're gonna have going into this one. So uh, they're gonna definitely have to show up if they wanna be able to play against these big boy squads. I can tell you what, I'm rooting for them. They're a little bit of an enigma right now, a mystery, if you will, not a huge track record, but ultimately they did get the invite, looking for them to do well in this tournament. Now moving on up my list, I've got Godsent, Blue Bee, Secret Gin, and Abrupt Slayers in my next four spots. And I can see on your side as well, we've got the Blue Bees and Godsent as well. So I feel like we've got some commonality here. Yeah, I mean, this is where it gets so difficult, especially on the bottom end, because at the end of the day, every single one of these teams qualified uh, to be the best in their region so i think anything can happen but you just got to look at the track records of the other squads they've been well seasoned they've been playing this uh, since basically the beginning here so i think that with these particular squads uh i just got to put them down the list someone's got to be there and i think that this is where we're gonna have to put them for now but hopefully they surprise us absolutely one of the key teams that i see on your list at number 17 airwolf lee max that's an interesting choice my friend they have done pretty well over the past several months on the big stage and they qualified through the pmpl southeast asia region i'm looking for them to actually surprise some folks you know it's so hard to actually make these predictions because probably we're way wrong like i hope i'm way wrong i hope everybody could win but at the same time you know we've got to rank some teams over the others, but I feel like Lee Max might be a little bit low. Uh, it's, to it's totally possible. I mean, I'm just going on my gut instincts here on who I think is going to go on top. And looking around, I mean, this is just so much competition. And at the end of the day, the big difference, I think, is here. We're going to be seeing these squads go for 20 days of matches. This is the first time we've ever seen that period so i mean airwolf lee max they have a good few days it could easily shoot up the rankings i gotta say the format of this tournament is interesting with the qualifiers happening during the weeks playing into the super weekend the top 16 teams during the week will actually play for points over the course of each weekend and that happens four weeks in a row so honestly it's going to be a battle of attrition it's anyone's game and it's all about consistency can you make it to the super weekend can you continue to put up points it's a requirement. You absolutely have to. Just looking at the PMPL that we saw here in North America, making it into Super Weekend is a must. We saw some top squads, unfortunately, not make it into one, and that was devastating for their total score and cost them the chance at to be able to compete here for this kind of money. So uh, it, those two days going into that Super Weekend are going to be war, and I am pumped up to see how it all starts out. All right, so let's summarize our bottom eight here. We've got six teams that are shared amongst our rankings that find themselves in the bottom eight. I'm sorry, it's not any indication on really anything. It's just our humble opinions. We've got Power 888 KPS, Class Digital Athletics, Secret Gin, Blue Bees, Godsend, and Elites United all sharing spots in both of our bottom eight. So I gotta tell them, Hot Jukes, you guys are on notice. Gotta, so uh, hopefully they can up. show up and uh, play in, man. I want to see them playing over the super weekends that are going on over the course of the PMGC. Okay, next on up, we got to go with the next eight squads. That's going to be ranked 9 through 16. Now, I kind of feel like we're going to get a lot of hate in this area because there's a lot of top squads that are heavy favorites in their region. At the end of the day, it's so difficult. This is our opinion, and there's so many top teams. Some of these matchups literally came down to basically a coin flip. We had a couple empty slots. We had two teams remaining. Flip a coin, yeah, put them in there, and that's how it is. 
it's super scientific, I know. But one thing that I noticed we differ on a little bit is the PMPL Americas region. We had A7 Esports and Execute Esports come through there. I see them on my list at 15 and 16 barely hanging on squeaking into that middle of the pack region where really anybody can place anywhere it's all a matter of who qualifies for the super weekends and who places well during those but i don't see either of those teams on your list through 9 through 16 and i don't recall seeing them on the bottom either what is going on over there hot jukes look all right i i'm the kind of guy that just roots for the hometown okay i'm from north america you can call me bias whatever you want but i just recently read the book the secret earlier you know and if, if i do not rank you know, these North America teams higher. It's not going to happen. So I got to put them up there somewhere. Uh, brother, I know I may get a lot brother. of flack for it. He's delusional. What are you doing? North America has yet to perform on the global stage. Call me, uh, I don't know, unpatriotic or what have you. But until I see an NA team go out and kill it on the global stage, shout out Tempo. I saw you guys in the PEC. But I want to see this on the main stage with all of the global teams. If somebody can do that, I'm going to be right there backing them up. Gotta say, I'm rooting for him, but I just don't know if it's gonna happen. So let's move on from North America and South American teams. Look up a little bit further on the list. I gotta give a shout out uh, to Navia, a recent entrant into the space from Russia, coming in at number nine on both of our lists. They gotta be a favorite to potentially crack into the top of the rankings. What do you think they need to do to do that? I mean, look, Navi is by far one of the biggest esports organizations over there, and I'm so excited to see them get involved here in PMGC. Uh, regardless, I think this is probably, in my opinion, the favorite uh, EU team going Going into this tournament I will have to move us on to our top eight at this point best of luck to all of the teams mentioned but guys in the top eight Hachuk just said that uh, probably the favorite European team is Navi I don't know if I agree I gotta say footballist from Turkey with Solke leading the squad has to be my favorite for the European region. They came out and crushed it in the PMPL and I'm looking for him to do big things here on the global stage at PMGC. Now look, you know, footballist, I love footballists from the start. I mean, watching them play in the PMPL was absolutely amazing. Regardless, just looking at these different squads, recently also looking at the scrims kind of going into this tournament, I just think Na'Vi with the amount of support they have and roster, I'm expecting big things from them here. Interesting stuff for sure. One of the squads I have mentioned is Konina Power. Really inconsistent, honestly, but I found them kind of sneaking up in the rankings more often than not. So I don't know what Konina Power is going to show up, but I gotta hope that they're gonna be able to bring their A game and really show people what they can do. I've got them at number eight. And then uh, as we could see, the number one through three are not shown right here. And uh, I'm noticing that a couple teams from both of us are, are missing right now. I've got loops at number four. I see them at number six for you. And uh, I'm wondering how our top three compare. I had to put execute in fifth place. Okay. They're from NA. I know these guys, they worked hard to be able to qualify all the way from PMCO. Now, I have to put them in the top five because I would love personally to see a North American team show up in the top five. Now, is it very likely? Uh, I don't think so, but at the same time, I would love to see it happen, and I, I just had to put them there. I couldn't, I couldn't allow myself to rank them lower. That's amazing. Well, hey, let's go ahead and reveal each of our top three, and uh, let's start with you, my friend. Give us your top three power ranking teams for the PMGC 2020. First place, in my opinion, I gotta go with RRQ Athena. Now, these are two, these is a squad that I personally played against in Dubai. I got to meet these guys. Interesting. So we've got uh, RRQ coming in at number one for you. I got to say I'm a big fan of Ernie on their roster. I feel like he's underrated. He shows up for every big event and they've got a really solid and consistent roster dating all the way back to a year and a half ago. We saw them come out to some of the early like PMCO tournaments and some of the you know, star challenge even. And RRQ has been a heavy favorite worldwide for quite some time. Excited to come see their dominance here on the big stage at PMGC. I also see Bigatron there along with Nova Esports. I think Nova Esports deserves a mention with Paraboy and his crew really smacking people around at the Peacekeeper Elite Championships that went down this last week. Yeah, just seeing them, that's why I had to put them into number three and specifically because Bigatron, just they have actually won global tournaments multiple times now. I mean, 
mean, this their, their level of skill, synergy, again, also having two twin brothers on their squad, I think is a huge advantage. Luxy and Zuxy crushing it. Uh, at the same time, though, Nova with Paraboy, who I think a lot of people consider uh, being one of the top players, you know, so uh, I had to put them in the number three spot for sure. So I'll reveal my top three as well, and it looks quite similar, although no team shares the same ranking here. I've got Bigatron, the red aliens from Indonesia, on top of the rankings. They have absolutely stunned people time and time again over the years. Again, a very consistent roster, really anchored by Luxie and Zuxie, as you mentioned. Both of those guys contenders for the MVP overall. And I gotta say, Luxie is my personal favorite player in PUBG Mobile, so big love going out to the Bigatron Red Aliens. Hopefully, they're able to bring the thunder like they always do. I have no doubts. In number two, I have Nova Esports. Uh, XQF is absolutely bananas. Those guys are crazy. Paraboy leading the way each and every time out, and I think he's got to get some special powers from that top knot, you know? He's rocking that these days. And then third place, I've got four angry men or 4 a.m. also from China. They seem to be the number one rival for Nova going into this uh, this championship. They've got the most experience against each other. And now it's all about China versus Southeast Asia in my eyes on this global stage. Who is going to be the tougher teams? Will it be the Southeast Asians? Will it be RRQ, Bigatron? Or will it be 4 a.m. and will it be Nova? You got loops ahead of RRQ in this one here. What made you decide to put them in this ranking spot right here? RRQ, as of late, for me, hasn't impressed as much as they have in years past. I wonder if they've lost a step. They keep sharing the same region, obviously, with Bigatron, and Bigatron continuing to put up gold after gold after gold, and RRQ just hasn't been able to get over that edge. I gotta look at Loops as being just the dominant team from outside of Asia, essentially. They've got Carrillo. The man is an absolute monster. One of the best technically sound players I've seen in the world. I'm looking for him to do big things and carry loops to hopefully a placement here at PMGC. Like you mentioned, you know, yeah, they are Q having trouble against those squads, but now loops is going to have to go against these squads here for relatively the first time. Now they did go into PEC placed pretty low, but they only had two of the players on their roster. So I don't think we can really count that here, but Man, uh, Carrillo, like you mentioned, watching him inside of the PMPL, my eyes were just like glued to the screen. The man's an animal and it could definitely show up for a squad. So I don't put a lot of stock in their recent performance at PEC. Looking for them to bring it at the PMGC 2020. Uh, let's move on to our top players to watch. They have been carrying these top teams. We're looking at teams like 4AM. We're looking at Nova. We're looking at Bigatron. And I got to say, we're looking at RRQ for some of the top players in the world. The amount of pressure that you feel going into this is astronomical. I mean, it's literally a life-changing amount of money. And not to mention, when you're playing mobile, a lot of these pro players are using gyroscope. So if you're nervous and those hands are shaking, that ADS button's going all over the place. But guess what? These players, they they live in the fire here. So I think that we have no choice but to put them here uh, in this ranking. Who are you picking as the favorites to take home the MVP, the most valuable player of the PUBG Mobile Global Championship here season zero? Number one, I think I gotta go with Paraboy. He just came off of PEC. He was pretty much the MVP there. Absolutely crushed it for his squad. I think a lot of people uh, can easily say or predicted that he was the top player on the planet for a very long time here. Yeah, I mean, the Thumbs yeah. Gyro player being the top player in the world is insanity. Interesting. So you've got Paraboy, then Zuxi from Bigatron. You've got D2E from RRQ. You've got Carrillo from Loops. And then we are wrapping up with 33 Zavano here from 4AM. That man has been an absolute tank. A lot of people are picking him to be the best player in the world. I'm going with my man Zuxi. Zuxy, baby, this guy's got some major, major experience at all of the big global tournaments, the big regional tournaments, and again, they keep putting up W after W at all of the big events, and Zuxy is always the man leading the way. But I gotta say, Luxy, his twin brother, this dude, he's also right there with him, and it's really a toss-up who is performing better on a given day, but historically, Zuxy has kind of edged out that relationship, so I gotta give him the number one spot on my MVP watch. Second being Paraboy, as you mentioned, the dude's a monster, and he's gonna be bringing it just like he did at the Peacekeeper Elite Championship this past week. Rounding out my top five, I've got Carrillo from Loops and 33 Zavano of 4AM. So 
big, big expectations from all of these guys, and historically, none of them have ever disappointed. They cannot relax. Not in this level, for sure, because guess what? The rest of the players, they are hungry. They have been working extremely hard to be able to be here. And like we mentioned, this is the first time we're going to see this format go for this long against the regions. Every other time that NA got to compete against these guys, it was only for a couple of days. So they don't uh, get too relaxed. I mean, I know they've been winning a lot of money and they've been kind of eating really good. So you can't got to make sure you hit that treadmill and are put in the work, so. Uh. Speaking of speaking of a lot of money and, and winnings and whatnot, Luxie and Zuxie, uh, Zuxie wants to buy a house with his uh, his winnings, and he says his brother Luxie already has a vehicle collection going on. These kids are like 17, 18 years old. What is going on here? Bigatron absolutely murdering everybody on the pro scene. Let's roll a clip. I think I'm gonna buy some house. <laughs> <laughs> New vehicle, maybe. <laughs> New vehicle. Zaxi have a collection of vehicles. <laughs> he has a collection of vehicles. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So Juke's a lot of great points on who's going to be the best player, who's going to be the best team. There's a lot of obvious ones out there with huge experience, a beautiful track record, and obviously the fan followings. We're looking at teams like RRQ, Bigatron, Nova, 4AM, even Loops to an extent as of late. But guys, there's got to be some teams out there that are going to surprise us. There always are. Who do you think, Hot Jukes, has the potential as a dark horse to place in the top three here? I think I got to go with uh, Konina Power. And the reason why is because while watching them in the, in the PMPL, they started off so strong off the gate and they had those kind of off games here and there. But I think that this squad have a lot of talent on their roster. They can definitely pop off if they want to. Not to mention, you said Dark Horse. Their logo is the horse, you know? So, I mean, I think that this is a squad that we definitely got to keep our eyes on for sure. Like you said, they're trying to will it into existence. Keep your eyes on Konina Power. My choice for Dark Horse to place in the top three is Zeus Esports. No one is expecting anything from these guys, but for me, I'm looking at their performances in some of the past club opens. They've gotten first twice and second once as they've won the wildcard region to qualify here for this tournament. They've been together now for well over a year, lots of experience with each other. So look for Zeus Esports to surprise some people, perhaps. Why don't we focus now on the teams that you think have the potential to actually win this thing that not everybody is talking about. Who's that gonna be for you, Hotjukes? For me, I think it's got to be Alpha 7 Esports from Brazil. This is a squad that I think is really good at adapting on the fly. Looking at the past tournaments, I've seen them do it, and I think that that is going to be the key to winning PMGC because, like we've been talking about multiple times here, this is a new format, something that none of these teams have ever experienced before. So we're going to be seeing new metas come out. We're going to see new strategies adapt. And I think that Alpha 7 showing their track record of being able to adapt quickly, if they do it faster than these other teams, I think you could definitely surprise everybody and possibly take the whole thing. I respect the choice, my friend, but now I gotta go with my friends over at Arrowwolf Lee Max. These dudes have a ton of experience playing together, dating back to mid last year. They've gone into six or seven big tournaments. We're talking A tier tournaments and done very well, including recently where they've taken over the PMPL, not only in Indonesia, but South Asia. They've taken second and first respectively. So a lot of great experience here for Arrowwolf Lee Max. I'm looking for them to surprise some people. They don't have the brand name that Bigatron does from their same country, but maybe they have some of the chops that Bigatron does to compete and hopefully place in that top three. Totally possible. I mean, when you have those squads as your mentors right there, it, I mean, this is about, I think, a lot of nationality pride coming from these different kinds of areas. So who knows? Maybe they might start talking to their big brother saying, hey, guys, what do you think we should change in our gameplay? And if they're able to adapt, it could happen. So what do you think, guys? Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? I'm sure 94% of you will say we got it wrong, but tell us how. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of our predictions. Tune in to the PUBG Mobile Global Championship Season 0 on PUBG Mobile Esports. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel to do that. But before we get out of here today, I want to challenge you guys with some of the same difficult decisions we've been faced with i'm gonna put something on screen right now you have ten dollars to build your ultimate squad for pmgc who are you going to choose take a screenshot of this circle your four players that you choose and share this on social media with the hashtag pmgc dream team 
do that and we might just have a reward for somebody that we think created the best squad this is insane now okay real quick just right off by seeing this i want to give a quick tip to everybody watching this when you create your squad something you have to keep in mind and that is a lot of these players don't even speak the same language as each other so you may see that top fragger igl that you love but how is he going to be able to tell his teammate where people are if they can't talk? So I think that that's another thing you have to consider uh, when you pick your squads. And I can't wait to see uh, the different rosters that these people come up with. That's right. Typically, these top fraggers are talking to somebody on their squad that's putting them in a position to be successful. So definitely something to keep in mind as you choose your teams. Guys, my name's been Power Bank. Thank you so much for joining the PMGC 2020 pre-show for Season 0. Hot Jukes is going to be casting, actually, during the tournament. So make sure you guys tune in, check him out but subscribe to the PUBG Mobile esports channel watch the event let us know what you think this is going to be going on all month long but for us we're out of here for now peace out guys enjoy the the banter the rankings and uh root your favorite teams on as they're gonna need it kills early on and hey kills is what they're good at doing there is a door but will it be death <laughs> it peeks out <laughs> So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight to the power bank. Power bang rankings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The power bank rankings, baby. The let's power go. bang rankings. It might as well. I should have just kept going, bro. That was funny. Oh. Right, we'll get we'll get it this day. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the 2020 PUBG Mobile Global Championship brought to you by PUBG Mobile eShorts. Eshorts, e baby! <laughs> Let's go! The new and improved! Put them on and start gaming! Let's go! <laughs>